Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Balls fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we will be talking about the portal. We've got some updates there. Got some updates on some players that are opting in to the bowl game and will be returning for the 2024 season. And we're also going to take a look at the players that could potentially be opting out of our bowl game from Iowa and talk a little bit about some of the matchups that uh, we are going to be seeing coming up on January the 1st. All right, so let's start off with some transfer portal updates, okay? So we all know about the tight end from Notre Dame. Holden stays. He's one of our top targets in the transfer portal, okay? He came off of a visit with us. Uh, he's been to Washington, and then he's also going to be going to Oklahoma later on this week. Now, UGA has thrown their name into the mix out of nowhere. So, you know, that could be a problem because Holden stays is from Georgia. And we all know that Georgia likes to use their tight ends something to keep a close eye out on. Uh, you know, hopefully we can entice him with the Nico talk and with the fact that we like to sling that football around. But I just think it's gonna be tough because I think that Georgia uses their tight ends a little bit more than what we do. So that'll be interesting. Now, for the next guy, okay, talked about Chris Brazil, okay? He is the wide receiver from Tulane, okay? Six foot five, 195 pounds. I think he's exactly what this offense needs. He is an explosive player. He could play on the outside. And, uh, you know, I think he would bring a whole lot to this team. Sounds like he enjoyed his visit with Tennessee. Spent a lot of time with Nico Iamalayava and John Campbell. Loves the campus, loves the stadium, loves the idea of playing in the SEC, loves our system. But one of the big things is there are several other schools that are courting him. And we talked about that a little bit yesterday. So one school that I think Tennessee really has to watch out for is Houston. Sounds like his old coaching staff is now at Houston. He visited Houston before he visited us. And he's also going to be visiting, I believe, Utah, Washington, and Colorado. But he is planning on making a decision here pretty quickly. So we'll see how those visits go. Really, really hoping that we can get this guy because, again, our offense will take a gigantic leap forward with a playmaker like that on the outside. Next guy is Fidel Diggs. Okay, so he is a defensive end uh, from Texas A&M. He is number 10, I believe, on their roster. And he had four sacks last season. Talked a whole lot about who can replace Tyler Barron as that edge rusher that can also stop the run. At six foot five, 260 pounds, Fidel is a guy who can definitely do it. Now, I believe he's a junior this season. So if we could get him, he would be coming in next season with, I think, one, maybe two years left. Uh, but, you know, obviously that is a position of need for this team. He could also kind of do what Tyler Barron did for us in that Rabbits package, bump into the inside, and he would get a mean pass rush, I believe, in that scheme. Now, Texas A&M runs a 3-4. So their front is different from what Tennessee's front is. And, you know, the pass rush, the whole deal is going to be a little bit different. I think that he would thrive more in Tennessee's system. I just think it fits his skill set a little bit more. But we've got a lot of competition in this one, okay? So his uh, current head coach, right, so the interim head coach, Coach Robinson at Texas A&M, is going to be taking the defensive coordinator position at Syracuse. And he is from Fidel's hometown of Camden, New Jersey, all right? And also Syracuse's new head coach is also from that same town of Camden. So there are a lot of ties there to Camden, or I'm sorry, there are a lot of ties there to Syracuse, uh, I guess, and Camden for Fidel. And, uh, you know, with him being from New Jersey and with Syracuse being up north, it'll be a place that his family could travel a little bit easier to and see him play. Now, does he want to go back up to all that snow, especially Syracuse? That type of snow is different from what Jersey sees. So who knows if that's going to be something that could entice him. You're also talking about a school that is more of a basketball school than it is a football program. Now, I know that they're going to try to change that culture up there at Syracuse, but it'll probably take them some time, especially in the ACC. They're not going to be one of the stronger teams unless they can get guys like Fidel and probably several others in that transfer portal uh, to come and join them. So Tennessee may have, you know, some advantages in some places. We have not even scheduled a visit uh, as of the time of this video, but hopefully we can at least get one, get Fidel on campus. You know, he was here earlier this season to actually play in at Neyland Stadium. So he knows just how electric the stadium is, how great our fans are. And maybe we will have a little bit more NIL money to spend on Fidel. And that could be uh, the straw that breaks the camel's back. But that's, you know, again, it's just one for us to keep a close eye out on. No idea how that's going to pan out. All right, now let's talk about some very positive news 
for our volunteers. We touched on it some yesterday about Dylan Sampson and Cam Selden being the, you know, running back one and two in the Citrus Bowl for us because Jabari Small and Jalen Wright have opted out of the bowl. But we got some official news that Dylan Sampson will be returning for the 2024 season. Okay, so he is officially out of the transfer portal. He actually never was in, but there was some speculation as to was he going to jump in, but that's off the table. So that's really, really good news, okay? He probably, you know, at least in my eyes, I think he was our second best running back last season, okay? He averaged 5.5 yards per carry, which is slightly better than Small, who averaged five yards per carry. And obviously the best was Jalen Wright averaging 7.4 yards per carry. I think that we're really gonna be missing Jalen Wright, but you do absolutely love the upside of what Dylan Sampson can bring to this offense. And, you know, you pair him with a guy like Cam Selden, who is a bigger back, but also, you know, he's very, you know, he's a very quick, shifty guy too, okay? Six foot two, 230 pounds, 4'2", 4, 4. You're talking about Cam Selden and Dylan Sampson being five foot, 11, 190 pounds. Guys that can be utilized out of the backfield very well. I think that the offense could look a little bit different in 24. I'm very excited to see how we kind of switch things up. I think that we will see some of that in this bowl game versus Iowa. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. But first, I just wanted to highlight the official stats for Dylan Sampson and Cam Selden from last season. So Dylan Sampson had 86 carries, 471 yards, seven touchdowns, like I said, five and a half yards per carry. But this is the interesting thing. He had 17 catches for 175 yards and one touchdown. Now, Cam Selden is a guy that had 12 carries, 51 yards, and averaged 4.3 yards per carry. Whenever you talk about Cam Selden, you're talking about a guy that was a straight up athlete coming out of high school. He played wide receiver, he played some quarterback, pretty much a do it all guy. But I think that, you know, because we've got two guys that are so versatile and that we can throw that football to out of the backfield, I think that in this bowl game, we are going to see a little bit of Tennessee going five wide with those running backs, okay? Because we've talked about it, right? Iowa's defense is, I believe, ranked number 13th in the entire country and number four in the Big Ten. It's just an overall defense, okay? Or I'm sorry, not an overall defense, but in rushing defense. So I think that just, you know, depending on how our offensive line will look coming into this ball game, who's gonna opt in, who's gonna opt out, who's healthy, who's not, we may wanna kinda spread them out and utilize the speed advantage that we most definitely have you know in particular our running backs versus their linebackers that is a mismatch nightmare for iowa's defense i think that we can do some of that and i think that we could also hit them on some jet sweeps okay if you can spread that entire field out make the linebackers have to cover our running backs you know in some one-on-one -on -one situations and then if we could motion them on a quick jet sweep something like that i think that tennessee speed could be a huge, huge problem for Iowa's rush defense. So going to be very, very interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. Now, even though Dylan Sampson is a little bit of a smaller running back, he actually runs very well between those tackles. I think part of it is because Tennessee's offensive line is so tall that he can kind of hide behind those guys and he can be patient and he's very explosive. His first step is boom, shot out of a cannon. And I think that we will have, you know, again, a big advantage just, you know, as far as athleticism in general versus their defense. So expect for him to find some creases in between those tackles and also to be able to get the ball out, you know, in the flat area on some jet sweeps on some, you know, maybe like little dump out passes and maybe him and Cam Selden can kind of line up out wide and, you know, maybe hit some deeper routes or some quick slants, something, but, that's, you know, a little bit of what I see the matchup looking like for Tennessee. P and I will talk more about this as we get closer to the actual ball game. And, you know, as we can kind of see who's gonna be playing and who won't be for both teams. All right, so let's talk about what players could be opting out of the Citrus Bowl for Iowa. We're gonna start off with the draft eligible players. And the first one is Cooper DeJean. He's a cornerback, he's number three, six foot one, 207 pounds and he is projected as a first rounder on several sites. All right, now Cooper is a guy that, again, he's projected as a first rounder. Can he play in this game and increase his draft stock? I would say more than likely no. All right, so if it was me, you know, uh, or just from what I know about how this stuff kind of goes, I'm sure that, uh, you know, his personal team is recommending that he opts out of this game. I haven't seen anywhere that he has already said that he's not going to play. But common sense would say that it's probably not a good idea for him 
to play in this game. Now, he is from Iowa, so he could, you know, maybe say, well, I want to play one more last game for the home state team. And, you know, that's great, but you've never seen an offense like this, all right? You have not played at least this season. Haven't played up against an offense that is actually going to spread you out and isolate you and force you to have to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. So probably it's not going to bode well for you trying to play in this game. So if if there is anyone, I think, on this Iowa team, you know, at least starting off going down this list that I think has the most likelihood of not playing in this game, it would most definitely be him. Next guy is Connor Colby. He's an offensive tackle. He's number 77 on that roster. Six foot six, 311 pounds. He's projected as an undrafted free agent. All right, now Connor is a guy that I think should play in this game. He's projected as an undrafted free agent and he needs to try to get his draft stock up. So I fully expect for him to participate in this game and, uh, you know, we'll see how he does, right? But I fully expect, you know, just talking about us, you know, back to the matchup thing, I fully expect for guys like Aaron Beasley to, you know, be able to use their speed to beat some of these offensive linemen, especially whenever they try to get up to that second level. And it does sound like we will have the bulk of our defense back, especially up front. So that's going to be a really, really good thing for Tennessee. But again, back to Connor, I think that he will play in this one. Okay, and the next guy that we see on the list is Luke Lachey. All right, now he is a tight end. He's number 85 on their roster, six foot six, 235 pounds. He had a season ending injury, all right? So I don't know if he's gonna be ready to play in this one, but he is projected as an undrafted free agent. So I would have to anticipate that if he can play, then he probably will. Uh, but you know, again, no real news on if he's going to be able to go. I'm gonna lean more towards he will not be playing in this one. All right, so after him, the next tight end is Eric All, all right? so. He is six foot five, 250 pounds. He's number 83 on their roster. He's actually the leading wide receiver on their team with 21 catches and 299 yards and three touchdowns. All right, so this is another guy that's projected as an undrafted free agent. So definitely think he's gonna wanna play in this game, especially if you look at the way that Tennessee has not had a lot of success in stopping tight ends really for the past couple of seasons, okay? Uh, you know, our linebackers, especially, I know if he's watching the film, he's probably chomping at the bit. I, I kind of hate to say it, but he's probably chomping at the bit looking at some of our players, right? And then also, you know, I saw an article earlier today that's talking about how Tennessee's secondary is decimated. And, you know, it kind of is. We're going to be playing a whole lot of freshmen and guys who haven't had a whole lot of playing time. So I would imagine that this is a guy that definitely would want to opt into this game. So I'm expecting for him to go. All right, and the last guy that we're gonna talk about that is draft eligible from Iowa is Nick Jackson. He's a linebacker. He's number 10, six feet tall, 237 pounds. He is the second leading tackler on Iowa's defense with 99. He has four sacks and two forced fumbles. All right, so again, this is another guy that is projected as an undrafted free agent, okay? Now, you know, I'm going off of just a couple of sites here and there's no telling if he's got some better information and I'm sure that all these guys do than what we're seeing. The real draft projections have not really come out yet, so there's no telling. Some of these guys could have a much higher grade than what we're seeing right here. But just for the sake of this video, based off of what we do know, I would say that, you know, again, if you're not projected to get drafted, really even I would say maybe like in the top three to four rounds, you probably should play in these games and try to get your draft stock up, especially if you have consulted with your team and they're saying, hey, you know, this is favorable matchup for you and your skill set this is a good opportunity for you to kind of showcase some things that these scouts are going to be looking for to bump your draft stock up a little bit more so i fully expect for him to play all right so he's from georgia and he's not going to get to play up against you know too many down south teams so this could be a good opportunity for him to kind of show that he can play with what is considered better athletes uh guys with a little bit more speed as a whole in playing up against tennessee's offense um, and, you know, I think that he's going to play in this one. All right, now let's take a look at the portal for Iowa. What you're seeing right here is a bunch of guys that don't really contribute much to Iowa's team. So there's really not a whole lot to note here. But the one that does stick out is Deontay Vines. Okay, he's a wide receiver for Iowa. He's number zero on their roster. He has the fifth most catches on their team. And he is the sixth overall receiver. He has 12 catches, 134 yards, and one touchdown. So Iowa's offense is what it is, all right? They're not gonna throw the football much, so I don't think that this is a huge loss, even though, you know, it seems like he was kind of one of their guys. It's not gonna make a huge difference in what they like to do, which is run the football and throw it to their tight ends. So, you know, he's not gonna be playing in this one more than likely, okay? 
I don't know. I guess sometimes guys might enter into the transfer portal and still maybe be able to play in the bowl game. Haven't heard him say that he's not going to be playing, but common sense would tell you that more than likely he's not. Uh, so if he does end up playing, you know, please don't shoot the messenger. I'm just going off of what we see right here. But, you know, again, I just don't think that that's a big deal. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this one, okay? As always, man, a lot of things are going to be happening. So, you know, throughout this week and throughout, since the transfer portal has opened up, I will create a video and as I'm trying to get it posted, more news comes out. So if more news does come out, just anticipate that we will, uh, you know, post something talking about that news at some point. And like I talked about earlier in this video, P and I will come together once, you know, probably like towards the end of this week or, you know, maybe even at the start of next week, once the rosters are a little bit more solid on who will be opting in and out for both teams in the Citrus Bowl. And we may go live for that one. Uh, just kind of talking about what the matchup looks like. And, you know, we would love to hear y'all's thoughts and concerns for this team. And, you know, obviously for the bowl game, sounds like we're going to have a lot of young guys playing, which is very exciting to me. No idea if Joe Milton is going to play. A couple of other notes. It does sound like Tennessee is trying to target some more guys in the 24th class to kind of fulfill our needs. We've got a couple of tight ends uh, and a couple of defensive linemen that we're trying to get. Uh, we'll talk more about that probably in the next video. But again, you know, that is great news. It just shows that the staff does get it. You know, they are out and checking on a whole lot of prospects and, you know, from the transfer portal to the 24 class to the 25 and 26 classes. So these guys are working hard and I'm really, really proud of them. Know that, you know, I kind of started to panic there, but I just wanted to know that we had some sort of a plan in place. And now that I'm seeing that, I don't think there's any cause for us to panic. We are going to finish strong and we're going to have a really, really good bowl season. And I think we're going to have a great, great 2024 season. Anxious to see how this whole thing wraps up. And as always, man, really, really appreciate y'all for tuning into the channel. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.